You mean it's happened? Can't we stop it? No, nothing we can do about it. We're back again with People Are Funny! <laughs> yes, that's star from Hollywood, John Goodell's production of People Are Funny, brought to you by Raleigh Cigarettes. Decisions recently issued by the Federal Trade Commission, an agency of the United States government, should convince you... You cannot believe in throat tests. You cannot believe in nose tests. But you can believe your own eyes. So take the Raleigh eye test and see for yourself the only real important difference between leading brands of cigarettes. The coupon on the back of the Raleigh pack. And now here is radio's top master of ceremonies, Art Linkletter. Well, hello there, everybody. Here we are again, ladies and gentlemen. We're starting our 10th season of People Are Funny on the radio for Raleigh Cigarettes. In those nine years so far, we've used up almost 5,000 contestants. And I use the word used up advisedly. <laughs> right now, we need fresh blood. And Rod O'Connor, who's here first to supply it? Mr. Glenn Calhoun from Los Angeles. Meet Art Linkletter. Hello, Mr. Calhoun. How do you do, Art? Have some nice fresh blood we can tamper with? I believe I have a little bit. How old a man are you, Glenn? 24, sir. And what's the business you're in? I'm Merchant Marine. Huh? You've heard this program? Yes, I have. You know what happens to the first person on the radio with us? I have a vague idea. You know who is our first contestant tonight? I am. That's seems right. Like. Yeah, it seems like. You're so young to go so rapidly. <laughs> you know, at the end of the season, we almost run out of ideas. But at the start of the season, we have millions of awful new gadgets to try out. Aren't you fortunate? I guess I am. <laughs> you look like a bachelor. Yes, sir, I That's am. That's what I asked for from the audience when yes. you came up and tried out a few minutes ago. I wondered uh, if a bachelor lives much differently than uh, normal people, uh, so to speak. <laughs> does a bachelor ever have to borrow anything? Do you ever go next door like a married man does and borrow anything from a neighbor? Well, no, sir, I don't. N so never do, huh? I eat out and everything, so I don't have to borrow a cup of sugar or nothing like that. Well, that's going to be interesting, because we're going to give you a little foretaste of what married life is like. <laughs> we're going to see how good you'd be, Glenn, at borrowing. Do you have any idea, for instance, what we might send you out to borrow? I don't have any idea. Uh-huh. That's just as well. You're happy up to now. <laughs> Mr. Calhoun, <laughs> you're going to a new neighborhood to try to borrow some total stranger's wife and child. <laughs> yes, that's the most unusual thing we could think of. Now, here's the plot. We have rented temporarily an apartment for you in a neighborhood where there are lots of children. Now, Mr. Atkins will take you over there. You rush around from door to door in the neighborhood and try to borrow a family. You see this man standing here? Have you ever seen him before? No, sir, I haven't. He's your rich Uncle Dudley tonight. How do you do, Uncle Dudley? How are you, son? He's willing to go along with the gag. Now, he's not really a rich uncle. His name is Herb Litton. He's a radio actor. But tonight he's going to help you. Now, here's how. Uncle Dudley, do all your nieces and nephews like you? Why, sure. And why do they like you? Well, whenever I see them, I always slip them a hundred. Now, Mr. Calhoun, here's the plot. Uncle Dudley will stay in your apartment while you rush around the neighborhood trying to borrow a family. Your story is that your rich uncle has dropped in as a surprise visit. He thinks that you're a married man with a family, and you must borrow a wife and child for an hour until he's gone. Now, now you got all that? Yes, sir. You I tell him that he always gives you with the mother if she'll come and, and loan you the, her child. All uh, right. You think you can do it? I know I can. I believe I can. <laughs> I think he'll give an awful good try, believe me. Now, do your best. And at the end of the program, come back and tell us what happened. So on your way, say goodbye to him, audience. There he goes. <laughs> He's really an enterprising character, isn't he? I think he'll do it if it's possible. And, and, and boy, what a spot he's going to be. And we didn't tell him everything, of course. In the first place, Mr. Irvin Atkins will only steer him to one house. We'll let him pick the rest out by himself. But at this first house, when, the, when he opens the door, <laughs> what he's going to see in the doorway. And remember, Uncle Dudley said he always slips him a hundred, which he's going to divide with the housewife. He uh, didn't mean a hundred dollars. A hundred pennies is all he meant. I don't care what she'll say when she gets four bits for loaning her child and herself for an hour or two. We'll find out, and there are a few other things en route for well, Mr. Bachelor. The, the deal's going to net Mr. Calhoun more than half a buck, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Calhoun will make more than a half a buck. He'll get a hundred dollars worth of fine Raleigh prizes when he comes back. And they're all up here, folks. You notice these? A pop-up to toaster. <laughs> 
There's nothing like a pop-up toaster. <laughs> Nationally advertised at $18.95. A deluxe eight-cup vacuum coffee maker, original windproof lighter, one zip and it's lit, a nationally known split bamboo fly rod and reel of $33 value, handsome lightweight luggage, and, well, there are dozens of other things. Every one is the best of its kind. Top quality, nationally advertised. They're all Raleigh cigarette premiums, and you can get them just like gifts. Just smoke Raleigh's and save the coupons. And remember, you cannot believe in protest. You cannot believe in nose tests. But you can believe your own eyes. So take the Raleigh eye test. And see for yourself the only real important difference between leading brands of cigarettes. The coupon on the back of the Raleigh pack. And now I'm coming down in the audience with a prize for somebody sitting out there who doesn't even suspect they might be in line to win a prize tonight. Do we have any engaged couples here? Anybody who's planning on getting married in the next few days? There's a hand back there. Uh, let's see, how soon, uh, how soon are you getting married? Sunday. Sunday, uh-huh. Where's the fella? Right here. You're the fella. Well, how do you do? What's your name? Rudy. Rudy who? Schmidt. Hello, Rudy. <laughs> Getting married on Sunday, huh? Who was the one who did the proposing? <laughs> He's in the proper days. He doesn't know where he is or what. Do you remember? Huh? Yeah, I did. You did, uh-huh. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, okay. where are you going to honeymoon? That's not been decided on yet. Uh-huh. I think, uh, I don't know whether we're going to have a honeymoon. He has to go in the Marines. You're going in the Marines? When? Monday. Uh, you're, you're supposed to go into the Marine Corps on Monday, and you're getting married on Sunday. Sunday. Well, you will spend your honeymoon at Camp Pendleton. <laughs> a wonderful place for a honeymoon. <laughs> well, here's the prize I said we had for some engaged couple. But I think I'll let a gentleman sitting a couple of rows behind you give it to you. Have you ever seen that man in the second row back there before? No, I haven't. It's your commanding officer. This is Colonel Brower, the director of the 11th Marine Corps of the Reserve District. Hello, Colonel. How do you do? Let's, uh, let's give the colonel a practice salute, Private. Let's, oh, that's a fine salute. Colonel Brower... This young man has a prize coming in to him. Do you have any idea what kind of a prize we could give him? Yes, sir. I'm very happy to uh, present him with uh, 15 days additional time in order that he'll have the opportunity to enjoy a little honeymoon. Here are your orders, son. What do you think of that, Private? <laughs> huh? Right up there. You, uh... You kind of surprised? Yeah. <laughs> didn't know this was going to happen to you, did you? No, I didn't. We happen to have learned that you have been frantically trying to uh, contact the Marine headquarters, haven't you? Yes, I have. You haven't been able to do it. <laughs> as far as you knew, you were going in next Monday. Well, right. we heard about it, and we got in touch with Colonel Brower, and, of course, the Marine Corps has always want to give a big helping hand to young fellows like you, so you have those two weeks for a honeymoon, and since you're here as a big surprise, which we worked through your father-in-law, who gave you these tickets. Oh, uh, you see, you got to look at it, look at it around. <laughs> Raleigh Cigarettes is going to help contribute a little more. We got those 15 days from the Marine Corps, but we're going to send you to Las Vegas, Nevada, for a full week's honeymoon, all expenses paid, at the showplace of the nation, the fabulous Flamingo Hotel. <laughs> okay, boy. Happy honeymoon. Don't worry about him, folks. He'll be breathing again in just a few moments. <laughs> oh, that's good luck to you, boy and girl. Well, uh, who's next, Rod? Well, we have three special guests, Art, Miss Nancy Chamberlain, and two young bachelors, Mr. James Johnson and Mr. Gene Schwartz. Well, the place is loaded with bachelors, isn't it? But this time, ladies and gentlemen, we have two guys and only one gal. And it looks like a triangle. I happen to know that it is a triangle. And it's my job to see what can be done with a triangle. <laughs> Let's talk to the young lady first. Your name is? Nancy Chamberlain. And where do you work, Nancy? At Water and Fish. Are you a secretary or what? I'm what they call a service cashier. Service cashier. You're about 22? Three. 23. Uh-huh. Miss Chamberlain, will you tell us why you're on People Are Funny? To see if you can help me decide between two fellows. 
That's right. You answered an ad in the paper. We advertised for young ladies with a special kind of a problem, and I would have bet personally ten to one we'd never have gotten any answers, but you answered the ad among a couple of others. Now, both of these men want to, uh... Marry me. <laughs> but you can't, uh... I can't decide. You can't decide which one. Now, that is a problem, folks. These two fellows are really in love with Miss Chamberlain, and she really can't decide which one to accept. Nancy, how long have you known your two suitors? Jimmy, about a year, and Jean, six months. Uh-huh. Now, how did you persuade them to come on the program with you? Well, I thought that it might help decide. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's learn a little more about them. Jimmy Johnson, uh, uh, what do you do? I work at Atwater and Fish also. Oh, you work in the same plant <laughs> Yes, <does>. I do. <laughs> Well, Gene Schwartz, where do you work? I work for S&M Auto Seat Covers. You, how old are you, Gene? 24. And Jim? 25. You know, this problem, uh, Miss uh, Chamberlain, might be solved for you by the Army. Oh, no. How about it, fellas? That was a nasty thing to say. <laughs> any chance of you being in the Army, Jim? I don't think so, no. Have you ever been in any, any service? Uh, I was in the service last war. Which branch? Navy. And how about you, Gene? I was in the Navy. Two ex-Navy men, uh-huh. Why do you want to marry uh, Nancy, Jim? Well, I think she's a pretty nice girl, and I've been looking around for quite a while to find someone. Yeah. And, uh... What do you think? Why do you think uh, you'd like to get married, uh, Jean? What do you like best about Well, it? Nancy and I have talked it over a few times, and we both look down the same track, and we both want the same things out of life. I mean, a happy home and everything, so... It's hard. You don't want a happy home, eh, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Well, he's implying maybe you're different. Well, Jim, why do you think you're the best man for her? Well, I don't think I'm the best man, but I think I can provide as well as anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think, Jim, you should be selected? Well, it's just that we see so much eye to eye, and we could be so happy together. Yeah, well, you are a little shorter than Jim. Um... <laughs> Jim, where did you propose to her? Well, <laughs> in an automobile. <laughs> How about you, Gene? In an automobile. <laughs> One of you is the man for her, and I'd like to help you make up your mind, Miss Chamberlain. Now, I don't think either of these men proposed under perhaps the right romantic conditions. Maybe there was the wrong setting. So here's what we'll do. For only one of you two men... We will furnish one of you with a beautiful, sleek, English Jaguar sport roadster to take Nancy to Ciro's for dinner and dancing and a long ride up the coast past Malibu in the moonlight. How's that sound? That sounds pretty Very nice. Good. Oh, yeah, so far. <laughs> now, here is the only question. Nancy, which of these fellows do you want to take you on this gay, romantic world? I don't know. <laughs> I have an idea, but uh, Mrs. Linklater was rejected. Now, right back to the start. <laughs> to settle this some way, what we need is a good impartial judge, and we just happen to have obtained a judge for these two fellows for this evening. He is Bobo, a pedigreed French poodle. <laughs> and here he comes right out onto the stage. Now, Nancy, don't look so surprised. Dogs have a sixth sense. They always know a good man when they see one. Isn't that right, Nancy? True. True. Now, you should be willing to trust Bobo's judgment. Fellas, how do you like the dog? Very nice. <laughs> yeah, very nice dog. <laughs> Don't flatter him. He's a French poodle. He doesn't understand a word you're saying. Now, the, the important thing is how he likes you because, fellas, he is going to judge you, and your whole future may depend upon his decision. Uh, Pop, uh, take Bobo and put him in the middle of the stage. Now, fellas, one of you go over to one side of the dog and one of you go over to the other side. Nancy, you come over here with me. When I give you the go-ahead, both of you start calling Bobo. Whistle at him, coax him, do anything you can to make him come to you. I'll give you ten seconds, and at the end of that time, the fellow the dog is nearest to is the winner. Everything clear? Okay, take your positions. Everybody in the audience, please be quiet. Don't call the dog. Nancy doesn't even know you. <laughs> okay, fellas, start calling. Here, Bobo. Here, Bobo. 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 Here, Bobo. Bobo. The dog is Here, running out to the middle of the stage. Here, Bobo. And the dog has gone over Here, Bobo. to... Gene. Gene. The dog went over to Gene's side of the stage. Gene, you are the winner. And what did I say you'd win? The date with Nancy. No, no, I said... I said the one the dog went to would be the winner. 
didn't I? Yes. But I didn't say what he'd win. Oh. <laughs> you know what you get? Bobo. You get the dog. That's right. <laughs> How do you like that? And, and Jim, this is the way we do things on People Are Funny. If it's sensible, we do it the other way. As a consolation prize, Jim, he got the dog. You lost. But as a consolation, you get the date with Nancy tonight. Oh, that's very nice. I, I like that. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, we're glad to, to solve your problem for you scientifically, as always, Gene. You'll see eye to eye with Bobo if you get down on your hands and knees. And Raleigh Cigarettes wants each one of you fellows to have, in fact, all three of you, to have $100 worth of those fine prices over there. A beautiful fireplace set, a set of sterling silver, anything you want, which will be, make nice wedding presents for all three of you. And let us hear what finally happens, will you, Nancy? Love to. Goodbye and good luck from all these people are funny. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's a case of a dog deciding. But now I'm coming down in the audience to pay somebody for talking at the rate of $5 a word. Let's see a hand right here. Anything you want, which will be, make nice wedding presents for all three of you. And let us hear what finally happens, will you, Nancy? Love to. Goodbye and good luck from all these people are funny. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's a case of a dog deciding. But now I'm coming down in the audience to pay somebody for talking at the rate of $5 a word. Let's see a hand right here. Uh, can you talk, mister? Yes. Pay that man five dollars, John. <laughs> if he just said yes, sir, I'd have given him ten. Uh, here's a lady, Mrs. Uh, Thornberry. i tell you what we're going to do with you. Instead of just having you talk for money, give her uh, ten five-dollar bills, will you, John? Fifty dollars has just been counted out in your hands. Do you like that? Yes. Goodbye. Now, oh, wait a minute. You may not get to keep that money. Here's the idea. This is a little game. I'm going to say a word. When I say a word, you say the first word that comes into your mind quickly, without stopping to think, and then I'll try to read your character by those word associations. Every time I tell you something about yourself that you will admit is true, you give me back one of the five dollars. But if I miss, if I'm not writing your character analysis, I'll give you five dollars more. Is that a deal? That's a deal. All right, let's go and see how it works. When I say the word, you say what comes to mind right away. So. Water. That's right. Now, the word associates soap and water. You are the clean type, and you take a bath at least once a week. Well, I certainly do. All right, I'll take five dollars, please. <laughs> if I agree with you, I have to give you five dollars What's back. that? You mean each time I agree with you, I have to give you five dollars back? That's right. That's right. When I'm right. When, you're, when I'm wrong, I give you five dollars, all right? Let's try this word. The word is man. Husband. That means you love your husband. husband? No. I'm wrong? You're wrong. Is your husband here tonight? No. <laughs> I don't think he's listening either. He's so working. you don't love him. <laughs> Give her five dollars, John. I'm wrong. <laughs> hands. Feet. Uh, you have two hands and two feet. Try to deny that. We'll take five dollars. <laughs> We're going to get our money back or break her arm. Try this one. Fly. Water. That means that you're a, a good, clean housewife and there's no vermin and lice and flies crawling around your house. No. It, it, you're not a good housewife? Mm -mm. I'm wrong. You have a dirty house? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what she'll admit to for $5. Give her another $5. Get out of there while we're still ahead. Okay, Ron, who's next? Mr. Robert Songer from Los Angeles. Meet Art Linkler. Ladies and gentlemen, we have coming up to the microphone now Mr. Songer. Uh, how old are you, sir? Seventy-five. Seventy-five, uh-huh. And are you retired? Uh, no, no, I'm just tired, not retired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're more tired than retired. What, uh, what business have you been all, in all your life, Mr. Well, Songer? Ranching, mostly. You raise cattle or yes, sheep uh, or what? Cattle. Uh-huh. Are you a widower or are you married or what? I'm a widower. Uh-huh. Mr. Songer, you're just 75. But you've probably been around older people. Yes, uh, which type would you rather be when you grow up? The nosy old type or the kindly type who goes around doing nice things for people? You'd probably rather be the nice type, wouldn't you? Sure. Well, most people would. Yeah, yeah well, we'll help you. You're going to spend the next week, 
You, are you free for a week? Yes, sir. That's what we wanted to know. If you're free for the next week, you're going to spend the next week being nice to people in a most unusual way. Sure. We are going to send you to an old folks' home somewhere in the United States. I won't say where. You'll change your name. You'll change your character. Because for one week, we're going to make you the nosiest old man in the whole world. <laughs> In other words, we want you to go there and pry and uh, ask questions and, and find out about people. Uh, can you be nosy? Try it with me. Is that your own teeth? <laughs> That's good enough. Are those my own teeth? I suppose you want me to answer that, true or false? But at any rate... Never mind. Uh, the, here's the idea. Being a nosy old guy, you'll naturally pry into the affairs of all these old people in the home. And you'll be doing it because we want to make one of these old folks very happy. And here's how. While you're snooping and prying around, you'll learn a lot about these people. We want you to find out which person in that old folks' home is the most deserving. The one who more than anybody else should have and needs a happy, happy surprise in their old age. Now, none of them will know about this because we've arranged for the radio in that particular home to be on the blink tonight for the broadcast. So it'll be up to you to pick out the one person who continues to be friendly and kind in spite of your nosiness and bring him back here if you can with you. We'll find out what he or she wants more than anything in the world, and if it's at all possible, we'll grant that greatest wish. Now do you feel a little better about being a nosy old fellow for a week? Sure. <laughs> all right, you'll do that? Sure. Mr. Songer, this is your chance to make some old folks' dream come true. So off you go. Goodbye, and see you next week, Mr. Donner. <laughs> Friends, Fort Pearson is giving smokers the famous Raleigh eye test in the Prudential Square drugstore in Los Angeles. Let's listen in. Pardon me, madam. May I ask your name? Uh, Mrs. Salem. Well, thank you very much. Miss Salem's. I see that you're a cigarette smoker. Well, tell me, please, have you ever heard of throat tests and nose tests used to advertise certain brands of cigarettes? Yes, I have. Well, Mrs. Salins, decisions recently issued by the Federal Trade Commission, an agency of the United States government, appointed by law to safeguard the American public against false and misleading advertising claims, should convince you and every other intelligent smoker that you cannot believe in throat tests. You can't believe in nose tests. But you can believe in your own eyes. So, Mrs. Salins, I want to give you the Raleigh eye test so you can see for yourself the only real important difference between leading brands of cigarettes. Now, look, Mrs. Salins, let's compare your package of cigarettes with a package of Raleigh's. Let's turn them around so you can see their backs. Now for the eye test. Do you see the difference between Raleigh's and the other leading brand? Sure, Raleigh's have a coupon on the back. You're right, Mrs. Salins. Raleigh's do have a profit-sharing premium coupon on the back. And that Raleigh profit-sharing coupon is the only real important difference between leading brands of cigarettes. It's a difference you can believe because it's a difference you can see. That makes sense to me. I'll give Raleigh's a trial. Thank you very much, Mrs. Salins. Thanks, Fort Pearson, for an interesting interview. And friends, switch the Raleigh's, the pack with the coupon on the back. Art, our bachelor is back. Remember, folks, uh, we tried a very interesting experiment tonight. Would a man be able to talk a mother, a strange mother and her child, into pretending she was his wife in order to share the money of a rich uncle. At the beginning of the show, we sent this bachelor out to a nearby neighborhood to go from door to door to try to borrow a wife and child, and he was to borrow, uh, to uh, promise them a split in the big dough his uncle would give him. Uh, is he back? Let's bring him in. And here is our bachelor, Mr. Glenn Calhoun. Hello, Glenn. Well, you're a pretty fast-talking boy. I wonder how you did. Mr. Calhoun, I want to ask you, first of all, uh, you were going to borrow a strange wife and a child to okay. pretend to be your own. What happened at the very first house you went to? A Chinese woman came to the door. <laughs> <laughs> a Chinese lady, huh? Yes, sir. What did you say? Well, I asked to wipe my brow and quit sweat, and I said, uh, Madam, I'm from the Daily News, I'm taking subscriptions. Uh, would you like to subscribe? <laughs> you didn't figure you could get that past your oh, uncle. I, don't th I didn't think I could. Well, then from then on, you could go to any house you wanted to. Yes, sir. So uh, how did you do? What, what, what did people say? Did, did you get turned down much? Well, I got turned down... Once, I mean, this woman, she had a uh, little baby, but I guess she thought I was crazy because she kept looking at me like that, you know, kind of funny. But you, <laughs> you promised her a split in the oh, money? Yes, I promised, promised a split in the money. What'd she say? 
Well, she said no. She said she didn't think she could have husband wasn't there, and she didn't want to do anything without him. She wanted to ask him about it. Yeah. Well, did you? But he wasn't there. Uh, but and then you went to the next place. Yes, sir. What happened there? Well, this this lady was married, but they didn't have the. Uh, she didn't have a baby. Oh, yeah. Well, you couldn't wait, of course. And then... <laughs> did you did you go on? Yes, I went on. Uh, what I happened went... the next place? Well, I went out the next place, and uh, there was. A uh, man opened the door, and as soon as he opened the door, I saw a big crib with a little bit of baby in it. I don't know, I guess it was about eight or nine months old, and I told him Dick and I was in, but he said his wife wasn't there. In other words, you found a man with a baby but no wife, That's a wife right. with a baby but no husband, That's right. and a husband and wife with no baby. I didn't have time to get them together, though, you know. <laughs> Are you available to work on our staff, old boy? <laughs> uh, did you ever borrow a wife and a child? Yes, sir, I got one. You got one? Yes, sir. Are they here? Yes, sir. They're out in the hall. Well, let's bring them in. Here they come, a wife and a child, and it's a boy about 11 years. And a husband came in. Hey, the husband. How do you do? What's, uh, what's your name? Hugh Wilder. And Mrs. Wilder? Yes. And your name? Hugh Wilder. Yeah. Oh, the little Hugh. Well, how come you, the, the husband came along? He didn't go along with you to Uncle Dudley, did you? Oh, yes, sir. He went with Uncle Dudley. I had to take him. You mean he, you couldn't get her and the child without him? Well, he came along, but see, as soon as I got in the room, he was my brother-in-law, so that was all right. Well, you told Uncle Dudley that he was your brother-in-law, yes, and sir. she's your wife. That's right. How did you like this? Well, it was all right. Fifty bucks is fifty bucks, you know. <laughs> well, the... Uh, <laughs> Mr. Calhoun, uh, uh, by the way, how long have you been married? Uh, uh, Seventeen years. Uh huh. And uh, what do you do? I'm a pressman. A pressman. Uh huh. And uh, what did you think, Mrs. Hughes? Is it? Hughes. Uh, Hugh. Hugh. What did you think when this fellow came to the door? Did you answer the door? Did your husband? My husband went to the door. It was unusual, but uh, since it was just next door, I didn't think anything could happen, especially if he went along. Well, you did, what, what was your first thought, Mr. Hugh? Wow, I kind of thought he was. Uh... Maybe drunk or something's wrong with him. <laughs> but then when you saw that he was all well, right. I could see he was sober, and so he explained it'd be right in the, near there, and I was mm -hmm. going with him, so I knew could nothing happen then. Yeah. Well, you, then you went over, did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, what happened when you went in the room? There was his rich Uncle, Uncle Dudley. Uncle Dudley. But well, what did Uncle Dudley say or do? Oh, well, he's kind of affectionate. <laughs> <laughs> kind of affectionate. <laughs> Well, when he met his favorite niece's uh, nephew's wife, what did he do? Well, he put his arms around me and kissed me, you know, like he was glad to see me. <laughs> what did you think of this, Mr. Hugh? <laughs> A kiss, 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, we have news. Uh, but at any rate, uh, <laughs> did, did, you get, did you deliver the money? What happened? Well, Uncle Dudley gave me the hundred, all right? He said, every time I come see you, I always give you a hundred. And... Well, uh, you want to give him half a hundred? I want to give him the whole hundred. <laughs> what did he give you? hundred pennies. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hugh. Yeah, I know now. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have known it was a buck, you'd have slammed the door up. That's that, right, you? that's right. <laughs> In other words, young Mr. Hugh here is the only one who got a, a buck out of this thing. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Well, I'm glad somebody enjoyed himself. What are you going to do with the money? I don't know. <laughs> You're rich, aren't you? <laughs> Income taxes next Friday. Now, uh, it seems that young Mr. Hughes is the only one with a happy ending to his story tonight, but we want all of you to be happy. Mr. Calhoun, you did a wonderful job. We want you to have $100 worth of those fine prizes over there. Mr. and Mrs. Hugh, you also get $100 worth of your choice. Sheer nylon hosiery, a big washable clothes hamper, a deluxe inlaid bridge table, anything you want. I think you're all good sports. Goodbye from Raleigh's People Are Funny. Coming up soon on People Are Funny, ladies and gentlemen, the greatest manhunt in history. Listen next week and learn more about it. Now, this is Art Linkletter saying goodbye and reminding every intelligent smoker to take the Raleigh eye test. See for yourself the only real important difference between leading brands of cigarettes, the coupon on the back of the Raleigh pack. Goodbye, everybody. Pipe smokers. You like Sir Walter Raleigh, the quality pipe tobacco of America. Never bites, never leaves a soggy heel in your pipe. Sir Walter Raleigh smokes extra cool with a rich, full-bodied flavor. 
You'll like everything about Sir Walter Raleigh. Next week, our nosy old man returns with somebody from the old folks' home. This is Rod O'Connor saying goodbye for Raleigh's People Are Funny Transcribed from Hollywood. Have you heard? Groucho Marx is coming October 4th to NBC.